certainly when we look towards um, what is happening with vaccines. One of the things that I was noted in the first um, vaccine development with SARS-CoV is that there was type two hypersensitivity responses that occurred in the animals. And this is why we never had a SARS-CoV vaccine. The question would be, could we be seeing similar type two hypersensitivity responses that are also occurring now. And I can't see any other way that it could be known except by pathology. What should we therefore do going forward? Well, I think uh, we should uh, try and organize more autopsies. As, as Dr. Shankara said, this is a novel tech, uh, this is a novel technology and uh, any, any deaths that are in any way associated with this novel technology should have been better investigated. Um, you know, uh, the work of Dr. Arne Burkhardt has demonstrated, uh, you, you know, very uh, heavy uh, autoimmune type and uh, lymphocyte rich inflammatory reaction, particularly in the vessels, both small and large. But, uh, you know, widespread in a number of tissues, including like a Hashimoto type thyroiditis and, uh, you know, in the thyroid gland, um, you know, autoimmune type uh, cell adenitis, this is in the salivary glands, um, you know, uh, vasculitis involving uh, small vessels in and around the brain. Um, and, and one technique that he actually, uh, you know, has, uh, I think, pioneered is, is the use of immunohistochemistry in this disease. Now, immunohistochemistry is, a, um, is something we've used in pathology for at least 30 years. We, we use it for diagnosis pr uh, primarily. So if we want to check for, uh, whether a cell is an epithelial cell, for instance, which would make, uh, you know, which would uh, make a cancer, a carcinoma, we would look for cytokeratins um, and we would use this immunohistochemical approach of antibody antigen reaction with a chromogen attached. So we can see a, a brown or a red color or, or some other color wherever that protein is present. Now, Dr. Arne Burkhardt has used this technology, well known, but he has adapted it for the spike protein. So he can see where the spike protein in, in, in the sections are concentrated using this uh, immunohistochemical technique. Um, and he has also been able to differentiate between um, vaccine-produced spike protein and spike protein resulting from COVID infection because the, the, the spike protein that comes with COVID infection includes a nucleocapsid protein, which is not present in, 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 in the vaccine. So where you have only the spike protein present and not the nucleocapsid with the spike protein present, that is an indication that the spike protein is being produced by the vaccine, not the virus. So I think, um, you know, his use of these techniques, which have been used uh, for many years, but have now been adapted towards COVID, have been, uh, you know, very beneficial as well. Wow, that is that is that is mind blowing. Actually, uh, any thoughts mm. on that, Shankara? Yes, uh, Philip. Uh, vitally important. <clears throat> uh, what Dr. Burkhart has shown is that we're dealing with an immunologic issue. Uh, the presence of lymphocytes. He did find mature mast cells at certain sites. He stained for spike protein uh, in those. That that was the controversy initially that this could have been from COVID infection, and then he stained for nucleocapsid and found it absent in his tissue. And that's how he proved that it was from vaccines alone, uh, seeing that it was only spike protein. The tissue was devoid of nucleocapsid. Uh, now, the, that kind of understanding, uh, with your comment that in uh, SARS-CoV-1, the mice that were given the developed vaccine on rechallenge with the virus developed severe hypersensitivity type pneumonitis, type 2 kind of uh, reaction. That's vitally important in going forward because we've got a, a large proportion of the planet vaccinated with a vaccine that has been shown to affect you immunologically. And if that in any way primes you to any future infection, best we know about it. 
because the future variants of COVID that we're exposed to might be milder, less virulent versions of the virus, but present with more severe disease simply because of the immunologic priming caused by a vaccine. And we shouldn't be seeing that as severe illness caused by a virus. That is simply a, an immune response that, has caused, that was caused by a previous vaccination. Now, these kind of things need to be understood so that we direct treatment to the appropriate uh, pathology. We stop trying to uh, kill a virus and start trying to uh, douse an inappropriate immune response. So I think the work of Dr. Burkhardt is vitally important in understanding where we might go in the future and to keep a broad view of the probabilities that exist with future severe respiratory illness. You know, it's almost frightening, Rory, to consider that we could potentially be identified. And you have to, rem uh, let me just clarify, my research into COVID-19 has always been the fact that I, I perceive it as a viral mediated autoimmune disease. And so everything I look for is about autoimmune responses. And so therefore, the minute you mention a vasculitis, you know, anything to do with um, uh, a, a vascular involvement, in my view, fits perfectly within that framework. But the truth is, the only way that I can see that this can be identified is through pathological examination. I can't see that we would be able to know this by any other source. Am I right on that? It is, is pathology absolutely central to understanding some of these patterns? Um, well, yes, uh, I think it, it is. You, you, you can get insights. Um, you know, from drawing blood, from taking biopsies, um, you, you can definitely get insights um, into what's going on. But to get a full picture, I think an autopsy is vital. And, um, you know, with regard to Professor Arndt Burkhardt, his hypothesis is that, uh, you know, the, the body becomes so busy fighting itself with as an like an autoimmune lymphocytic vasculitis, which is very widespread, and involves the you know the vasa vasorum, for instance, of the of the aorta. These are the feeder vessels that you know supply the outer layers of the aorta. Um, that larger vessels are involved. The myocarditis as well, pericarditis. All these things are uh, an autoimmune phenomenon, and because the body is so busy fighting itself. Um, there is lost immunity uh, towards fighting um, other infections. So we're seeing, uh, you know, herpes zoster shingles re reactivated, and 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 uh, you know the the immune system is also involved in suppressing cancers. So with the um, you know with the immune system being busy fighting itself, autoimmune some of these cancers are allowed to pr uh, proliferate. That's his hypothesis, and I think it's a good one.